Hello, welcome to December 2nd of Vlogmas, the vloggity vlog of the Vlogmas. Now, I, you know, like Dan don't really know what Vlogmas is all about. I'm kind of, it was his idea. I blame him. I think, I thought it was a terrible idea. We shouldn't have done it at all. No, I agree, because I'm the boss. I am in charge of all of this. It's all my fault. So we're going to continue with the Vlogmas of Introductions, which seems apt to introduce ourselves in December, I feel. Uh, both my, me and myself, both myself and Daniel, our birthdays are in December, so it feels right that we should introduce ourselves in the month we were born. In fact, I will be doing a birthday episode on the 10th, so that's something for you all to look forward to, you lucky so-and-sos. So, I thought I'd introduce you to my main hobby, if you will, because I, I, I used to play Magic the Gathering. I was highly incompetent at it. Um, highly incompetent, I mean, absurdly so. I played like three decks for, for all the time. I had, a, I had a Dragon's deck, and then there was another red deck that was crap, cause, and I didn't like it because I had dragons I could play instead. And so that's what I did, and I just was the guy who was always mono red, and they were like, "Well, I'm just going to build this deck that can't be attacked by mono red." And I was like, "Oh, I had one colorless spell I could use, and I stuck to it till I could use that spell." So anyway, so you may ask, "What is my main hobby?" I may ask that as well. Well, really, it's books. Now, I'll actually split this up into a couple of episodes, because I'll, as you can see behind me, I have these wonderful shelves. Feel, and I'll show you my actual book collection at a later date. I've got some old books there. Well, actually, they're antique books. Um, the oldest one I have is from the 1830s, I think, or is it the 1860s? One of those. Old book. Really like it. Um, so I kind of collect books. That's kind of my thing. I have a couple of weird books, um, and but today I'm going to show you what I've read this year. I may have already shown you this in an older vlog, but I didn't go over it that well. So I'm going to show you my what I've read this month, and well, not this month. I'll show you what I've read this year. I've read a lot of books this year, an impressive amount of books. To be honest, I don't know if I can beat it next year, but I feel I have to, at least try. Which may mean I do even less than I do this, than I do now. So, I shall take you to my book list. Uh, this is... This is a bit of fancy technology. Okay, this is my Google Doc of everything. So, begin with the first one, The Sparrow, by Mary Doria Russell and its sequel, The Children of God. Um, as I recall, these two books I read because of a podcast I occasionally listen to called Sword and Laser. Um, they're, in a way, affiliated with Geek and Sundry. Um, Veronica... It's Veronica Belmont and someone else who I can't remember. Veronica's the reason I watch it. She's cool. But they, you know, they, they talk about books and interview authors and do all the kind of things I wish I could do. So that was sort of the first books I've started this year. I did read, there were a couple of books I'd started in December that I finished in the days up to the 8th of January. I should note for American viewers, it goes date, month, year, unlike you barbarians. So, I think, um, I read Walden by Henry David Thoreau. I think I finished that on January 1st. I remember reading that in a couple of days. I really enjoyed that. But I didn't count it because I didn't start it last year. Um, I have a habit of binge reading. So, you'll notice a lot by Rex Stout. It's, uh, he writes the Nero Wolf series of detective novels, which I enjoy quite a bit. Um, I did stop at a certain point, simply because 
he did a he made a creative choice that I thought wasn't the best. Um, basically, each Nero Wolf novel is the start of the Nero Wolf canon, if that makes sense. So, Fertile Ants is 1920s, I think, and it goes through the Second World War, and it's sort of, Nero Wolf is always an older man nearing his 60s, and Archie Goodwin, his stalwart sidekick, is always a man in his late 20s, and they don't really progress in any way. I mean, there's a little bit of continuity that cropped up that um, Archie got a recurring girlfriend. But he was always kind of a womanizer, and anyway. Uh, well, so I, I've given every book a rating. This was this is a rating purely of enjoyment, not necessarily quality. Now, some books don't have ratings. That's because they're comprised of multiple um, segments. So in this case, it's a selection of fairy tales well, or folk tales. Um, good collection. I wish it was larger, though. It sort of. It's a fine introduction, but I, I I wanted more of a scholarly text. But I'm a I'm a folklore nerd. Um, so yeah, uh, what are some highlights of these early months? Oh, Electric Acid Kool Aid Test by Tom Wolfe. Um, well, chronicling the <laughs> electric acid Kool Aid Test um, and, the, and the bus and oh, wonderful sort of early 60s hippie paraphernalia. It also links up to some of um, Hunter S. Thompson's work. Very interesting novel. I can't believe I read it ten months ago. Um, yeah, though the reason I only give it a 6.5, as I recall, is simply that, as with all biographies, it can drag. Um, it's sort of... There are and there are, it doesn't pick up with characters, which I realise they're actual people, and I need to get myself out of that mindset for a bio, for a biographical piece. But they're sort of characters who get left, and you don't, you never hear from them again. And they're sort of very interesting people. Oh, it, it's um, it's a fascinating book. I I may reread it again soon, which is rare for me. I don't like to reread books. I. I find I'm, if I'm rereading a book, I will be reading the end of the sentence when I start it, if that makes sense. So I'm, um, as I'm starting a sentence, I'm already remembering the end of it, and it kind of, there's a discontinuity there. Uh, Flow My Tears, The Policeman Said, by Philip K. Dick. This was a, this was another excellent novel, though Philip K. Dick does tend to produce excellent um, stories. This is kind of a precursor to uh, I'm derping, I'm recording this late at night or I would have this down. Um, Valquick, Valak, it's one of his major works and I feel off. Not, I can see the word, I just don't know how to pronounce it. Um, this is a sort of earlier version of that. And it's sort of kind of interesting. It's not the most highly rated um, Dick story. Personally, I like I like um, the transmigration of um, Reverend Timothy Allen. I think that's the name of the book. It's the transmigration of Timothy something or other. Really interesting book. Very similar to Flow My Tears in a way. It's sort of dealing with once again, the 1960s and 70s Berkeley, which the uh, electric acid Kool-Aid test deals with, the whole scene there, whereas um, the transmigration of Timothy Allen is a slightly later thing. It's sort of the main characters have all gone through the stuff that um, that flow my tears. At, well, flow my tears is um, a sort of alt history, but it's kind of it's very close to real life. In fact, you know, it's based on a number of actual events in Dick's life and the lives of his friends, and the events of the electric acid Kool-Aid test, and say Hell, um, Hunter S. Thompson's book, The Hell's Angels. I guess chronolo in terms of chronology, it might also be past his um, 
Fear and Loathing on the Campaign Trail in 72, which I wrote later this year. Um, it is an excellent book. I can't remember when I read it. It must have been last year. Um, I like Dick's works that are more character-focused um, rather than kind of just... than his works that sort of go very much into ideas. He tends to get a bit mm, waffly. I mean, Flow Might Is is a very interesting story. It actually turned me on to um, an excellent musician from the 16th century who's sort of prominently focused in the book. Uh, John Dolet. I don't know if that's pronouncing it right. He does excellent loot work anyway. Uh, Burn of Venge. Fire upon the deep. I remember that being good. I can't remember any specifics about it. Um, Red Miles by King, Kim Stanley Robinson. I, I did the entire Mars trilogy and... I have some really mixed feelings on that on that series. Um, one of the main things of it is that um, there's a gerontological treatment where characters don't die. It sort of ends the aging process, kind of. I mean, people still age, but they're still f able to function, which is um, which is a weird thing. And I really felt like he just didn't want to lose his characters, like he'd fallen in love with some of them and just didn't want to kill them off. And I can kind of see that, but then he kills off other characters who I thought were far better for little reason. Uh, so, a mixed series. Some prefer Nettles by Jun Itro Tanizuki, or however the fuck you pronounce that. An excellent novel, and um, it's a Japanese classic. It's one of the two or three highest rated books I've read this year and while I I just enjoyed its technical technical quality as opposed to sheer bulk enjoyment which I'll get into in other novels though um, I'm a big fan of what I sort of call um, I don't even know what I call it. There's a very particular style of Japanese media that I really like. And um, there's a particular filmmaker who is brilliant at it. Once again, I'm branking on the name because it's late at night and I'm tired. Um, oh, he He's um, one of the two big ones. He did, like, um, Early Autumn or Summer's Twilight, those kind of films. Um very much centred around families and in some ways ageing and differences between generations but there's sort of there's a, there's a beautiful silence to them uh, I watched a lot of them when I was um, in, in college and there's I very much felt that in this novel sort of it's about this sort of the breakup of this marriage and how these two people are only together not even for the child but for the sake of um for this not even the sake of appearances for the sake of routine and the wife has got another man and but the husband has no one and it's sort of the wife uses it as an as an excuse to stay and that you know she can't leave her husband until he finds another wife and at times in the book she tries to set him up with other people, but it's sort of, no one wants to break the comfort, and there's another wonderful character who's um, the wife's father, and the husband doesn't want to break up the marriage because he's such good friends with the father. They have a very similar feeling about the world, sort of a, a sort of a bourgeois attitude about life and their sort of obsession with old Japanese culture and sort of classical Japanese culture. There's a there's some there's a brilliant scene uh, in a um, Bunroku 
puppet theatre where I th- um, the three of them get together and watch this play and then they have a discussion about the implicitness of certain movements and the delicacy of the hands and it and the husband can really see himself becoming the father and then the, and that sort of reflection turns to the wife and she sort of feels that in a way she'd be divorcing her father it's a very interesting I'm putting too many words in it in a way it's a very quiet novel and I'm I, I would highly recommend if you if you like similar Japanese media, you check it out. Um, Destination Void by Frank Herbert. First Frank Herbert novel has disappointed me. And that was a shame, because I love Frank Herbert. Dune, or June, however he wants to pronounce it, is my favourite novel of all time. I, I think it's the best novel written because it is so complex in its politics, in its religion, in its morality. And the more I read the novel, the more interesting it gets. And this was a disappointment, though. It was still a good space romp. John Dies at the End by David Wong. This and its sequel have to be my favourite books I've read this year. Now, I only rate them a 7, um, because... They are, well, they are sort of, they don't, they're not well written enough to deserve an eight. I don't intrinsically love the writing of them, but the stories and the character, the story and the characters are just so interesting and so funny that aside from a few moments in the first one and not many in the second, I think they're just really enjoyable reads, and I'd highly recommend them to anyone who just wants a good laugh. In fact, John Dies at the End is the first time I've drawn fan art of a character. That's how much I enjoyed it. Um, the main character... Well, one of the main characters, John, they believe they're fighting a demon. So what does he do? He duct tapes a Bible to a baseball bat. Because that's how you deal with a demon. And this book is full of spiders. Seriously, dude, don't touch it. David Wong. This is for more of a body horror, um, body horror novel than a sort of than the supernatural horror that John dies at the end was about. Though they are connected. I don't know if the writer's going to do any more in the series. I know he's written a new book that I have, but I haven't bothered to read it yet. Uh, it's called... Um, oh, it's um, like Violence and Futuristic su- Suits or something. Um, similar name to another book I read recently. Um, Software by Rudy Rucker. This is another interesting book. Um, Rudy Rucker is one of those pioneers of um, of cyberpunk, and I really love the cyberpunk genre, but I never read any Rudy Rucker, and he has sort of this, he has the most punk feeling of any um, any of the, of the big cyberpunk writers that I've read. Uh, sort of, it's kind of a high-octane, weird, drug-fueled, weirdly sexual world that sort of grows over these four novels I read two and a half because frankly the third one grossed me out and I don't normally gross out at sex stuff but the idea of people fucking sentient mould and then having said mould put bionic chips in their brain in the fuckies brain to control them got a bit too squicky for me uh Narrow Road to the Interior by Matsuo Bansho. Basho. Is it Basho or Bansho? I don't know. I really enjoyed this novel at the time, though it hasn't really stayed with me. It's sort of a, it's a, the remembrances of a, a Japanese Buddhist hermit, a Zen hermit, 
who lived on a mountain on a mountain and contemplated life and Zen philosophies. Um, it was a very relaxing novel, I remember. Uh, the King in Yellow and Other Stories by Robert W. Chambers. Once again, one that is not rated, but frankly, if I was to rate it, it would be a seven overall. But it's a short story collection, an excellent horror series. Um, it kind of it gets a bit flabby in certain stories, I think, but other than that, it's it's a very interesting horror selection. Uh, let's see. 2010. I, I know I read 2001 last year. I honestly don't remember anything about this. I've read a lot of Clark, though. Mm, Solaris by Stanislav's Lem. Considered one of science fiction's greats. An, an interesting and excellent novel that I honestly didn't see where it was going. Um, to be honest, I've kind of avoided this novel because um, I saw a film called Solaris in the early 2000s uh, that was about a um, some kind of reflective dish being sent to the sun because the sun was burning out. It wasn't a good movie. But I really enjoyed this because it's actually... Uh, very interesting idea of memory and what are people and I, dealing with ideas that I find interesting. I haven't really wanted to approach Lem again because he he's a bit heavy, but he's worth but he's worth looking at. So maybe he's just one of those writers I'll read once a year. Titus Groan by Mervyn Peak, um, a bit of classic British fantasy. Highly, highly enjoyable. It's structurally very interesting. It has two sequels. Read half of the second one, but I dropped it because I think I got ill while reading it and just didn't pick it up again. But it was very enjoy. But Titus Grown is very enjoyable. It paints a very bizarre picture of all these sort of highly ritualized societies. Uh, well, this highly ritualized society then has sort of sub-societies around it and within it. Very interesting. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. I have read this book more times than I can count. Um, it's the highest rated book on the list this year, thus far. Still another, another month to go. And yeah, I, I love this novel. I love the entire series. I haven't read the continuation by Aaron Kofer. I have read Kofer's work in the past and enjoyed it. It's just... Adams is kind of sacred. I, um... This version I remember I listened to on audiobook. A lot of these I've listened to on audiobook. But this one in particular uh, was read by Stephen Fry, who is an excellent um, narrator. So what have we got next? Oh, this is where I went through my Pratchett phrase. <laughs> what can I say? Pratchett is really, really good. Um, the, the Strain and the Fall by Guillermo del Toro and Chuck Hogan. Um, excellent trilogy. I once again dropped the third one because I am a scrub. Basically, this third one was more about the most annoying character and less about the horror. You know, the end of the strain is just like, oh, how is this going to have a happy ending? And the fall is kind of like, there isn't going to be one. <laughs> That's great. And then the third one is like, I don't care about this character. Why are we talking about him? And a bit of Lovecraft. And a couple of... Well, actually, this is kind of my pulp phase. Um, these are... Pulp sci-fi and pulp horror. All good fun. Uh, Neil Asher. Prey to Moon and Shadow over Scorpion. 
interesting military sci-fi. Uh, Gills All Fright Diner by A. Lee Martinez. A weird another horror comedy. Uh, nowhere near as good as the David Wong books, but very interesting and if you if you're in need of a good laugh, it's worth reading. It's if you've ever read, well, I'll get to that. Uh, there's another book later on, but um, if you've ever listened to the podcast "Welcome to Night Vale," I um, I would say they're in similar lines. Uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs, the Time That Land Forgot series, just a good way, a good interesting series. Uh, Between the Rivers, uh, the history of ancient Mesopotamia. Interesting collection of essays on Mesopotamia and history. Fear and Loathing on the Campaign Trail, 72, by Hunter S. Thompson. An excellent political artifact, despite the fact that a lot of it's made up. Well, not a lot of it, but some of it is, and there's a whole sequence where Thompson spreads this rumour about one particular candidate being addicted to Ibogaine. Or Ibogaine. Which, at the time, he didn't know was a real drug. He thought he was making up the name. Uh, oh. Magic Shifts by Elona Andrews. This is, I think, the ninth or tenth novel in the series by Elona Andrews. It is an, oh, it's a really fun series of post... It's sort of... Um, it's not... Well... It's kind of post-urban fantasy in a way. It's a post-apocalyptic world where magic has returned and magic kind of destroys technology, especially anything electronic. But magic comes and goes. So people have to survive in both the magic and the tech. And uh, the main character is a is a mercenary and it's, you know, this is the ninth book in the series. There's a lot to go over. It really, it's a really fun series. Mm. Uh, King Arthur, History and Legend. This is why we covered, that's why we had King Arthur Month off on uh, What the Folk. Um, Kevin Hearn, he, this is the entirety of the Iron Druid Chronicles. Quite sad because this one came out this year and is a really fun series about um, an ancient Irish druid called Sheerhan, and he sort of and it's sort of his his fighting with the old Irish gods, the Tuatha de Dathan, and other gods. Like Jesus is a character, and he's kind of a drinking buddy of the main characters. Uh, it's a very interesting. Um, it's an interesting series that I want to see the next novel of. Um, or Jack Vance. This is actually quite a fun pulp series. Kind of very short. All about this um, guy who gets stranded on this alien planet, and it's got these four um, alien species that have each enslaved humans and there's kind of been a divergence in humans it's quite interesting um, Fire from the Sun and Exile's Kiss by George Alec Effinger these are the last two books in the Budin trilogy which is some of the best cyberpunk I've ever read also set in an Arabic context so quite worth reading uh, First one is when gravity fails. Oh no, when gravity falls, I think. Uh, it's about this kind of this drug addicted hustler called Marid, who gets involved with a local crime lord, who's far more than a crime lord, and he kind of has dirty dealings with all manner of other crime things. Um, sadly, Effinger died before really completing the series. There is a fourth book called Buddhine Knights that 
is a compilation of short stories and a chunk of an unfinished manuscript. Uh, there was also a, an adventure game on the Amiga, I want to say, set between uh, When Gravity Fa- Falls and, an, and a Fire in the Sun, which fleshes out some of the side characters that um, Effinger wrote. Uh, Interface. Surprisingly, the I think this is the only Neil Stevenson book I've read this year. Uh, this was written by his uncle, uh, between himself and his uncle, George F. Dewsbury, who goes by the names. A uh, fairly interesting political thriller. Um, but, uh, what's to do with power satellites? And I'd actually read another book on power satellites earlier this year. Um, where is it? Oh, it's quite a way back, it seems. I can't remember. Um, oh yeah, here it is, Power Snap by Ben Bova. Which was a pretty decent novel, but... I tried to get... it's part of a long series, but I couldn't get into it. Um, so yeah, interesting story. Swords and Deviltry and Swords Against Death by Fritz Lieber. These are two of the Lankmar books. Uh, I read read a couple of them now. Uh, collections of, of stories from the Lankmar universe. Now, I, they are technically a collection of short stories, but they're all linked short stories that kind of go follows the same characters going from one story into another. So I did uh, rate them as the same thing. But they're quite fun. Uh, the Utterly Uninteresting and Unadventurous Tale of Fred, the Vampire Accountant by Drew Hayes and Undeath and Taxes by Drew Hayes. Another horror comedy. I love the genre. I'm such... I'm so weak to hor- horror comedies. It's just like, I, have, I, I, I need more. Um, really fun. So, uh, you know, it's about a vampire a guy who got turned into a vampire and he's an accountant and a complete wuss and he sort of teams up with this girl he knew from high school who's become um, an agent in a for the government who kind of keeps supernatural beings in check and everyone's like wow vampires are such badasses and Fred's like what? no they're not no they're not I mean yeah I drink blood but can't do nothing I can do taxes and that's his superpower he can do taxes and it kind of reminds me of the Alona Andrews books in the hierarchy, and also there's a really good uh, shapeshifter character who's a werelion. Badass werelions are kind of a thing these days. Don't ask me why. Kind of a disappointment with this one. Probably one of the lowest rated books here. I don't normally finish books I don't like. I, I'm terrible for not finishing books. And... I really had to push myself to finish Tech War. I'm sorry, Bill, but it really shows it's your first novel. Um, I really like the Tech War TV series and the movies, but the novel wasn't that great. Um, I can't remember if I finished the second one. There's a bunch of them. A Requiem for the Rule of Worlds, Jinx on Terran Inheritance and Fall of the White Ship by Brian DeLay. Um... An excellent kind of very interesting and fun sci-fi series. They kind of have like a butch casting and Sundance feel feel about them. They're um, also something of a um, Hitchhiker's Guide feel. It's about two guys who are kind of forced together out of ill luck, and they end up traveling the universe basically as hitchhikers, sort of running from trouble to trouble, and end up in a way changing the universe. It's a really fun series. It's got some good humour. It's not an out-and-out comedy, but it's got some good funny moments. Um, And yeah, it's sort of... It's a good series. I recommend you check it out. Um, Yeah. This was my preparing for... and my reading through NaNoWriMo, the A. Bertram Chandler books. Uh, These are... Uh, all well, yeah, I read a lot. Uh, all bar Saturn's Run here. 
They're all books. Well, that's by a different author entirely. Um, yeah, decent. These are all books about the same character. Um, John Grimes, who's a starship captain of the sort of... And they're all very classical pulp naval starships. Um, it's all very naval and it, it, very Australian. It's, um, in fact, um, is it in Matilda's stepchildren? Um, he meets up with a bunch of kangaroo people. It's really fun. Uh, I did actually read a bunch more of these, but they were short stories, so I didn't include them. Uh, and actually one of the really fun book, Welcome to Night Vale by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Co Craner. Craner, I should know, I listen to the podcast. Just like the show. But not dealing with Cecil, um, deals with two other characters. And yeah, it's a good, it's a really good book and well deserving of its eight. Um, and Guns with Occasional Music by Jonathan Letham. It's a, it's a fun, interesting sort of cyberpunk um, detective story. I'm really fond of cyberpunk and detective stories, as you may have told, told, could tell from this list. So it's sort of, it's got some really funny stuff like there's, um, it's also just weird in places. Like, the major villain is an intelligent, uplifted kangaroo. I, I just find that inherently funny. Like, he's a kangaroo who's a mobster. So you're imagining him with a little striped waistcoat and with the fedora and the tommy gun? That's about right. <laughs> it's very much like that. So I'll now switch cameras back to me, and I'll tell you what I'm currently reading. I'm currently reading Understanding Japan, A Cultural History. I like history books. Uh, last year I read a mammoth one on China. So I'm doing uh, this one on Japan. It's um, really interesting. Going from the very early history of Japan, from sort of the extended Stone Age, uh, I'm just about to hit the Meiji re Restoration. It's very interesting. So, I hope you enjoyed this sort of look at what I've read this year. Um, if you have any recommendations for what I might like to read, tell me. I might get them for Christmas. Uh, it's kind of sad that my Amazon wish list for books is longer than the list of books I've read. But, I like books. Books. Oh my god, I love books. Books. Um, one thing you will notice when I do my next vlog on my bookshelf is I don't have a lot of these books. Because I read them on ebook. Or I listen to them on audio, audio tape. I've read the ones on my shelf. <laughs> so, thank you for listening, thank you for watching, thank you for bearing with me. Happy Vlogmas!